You can look at the face of Michael Jordan to know that he feels confident the Bulls are headed for another W. He has enjoyed himself tonight. Michael Jordan with 50 points tonight. Maybe Tim Hardaway should have kept his mouth closed. When Michael Jordan picked up a Miami newspaper the morning before the game, he saw something he didn't like. There was a team interview in the paper and Miami's point guard Tim Hardaway said, this year the Chicago Bulls are gonna take us seriously. Those are fighting words to a guy like Jordan, who was looking for motivation at every point in time in his pro career. Not only Jordan, but the whole team read that piece. MJ's teammates had been with him long enough to know it was a personal challenge. He met the challenge in a big way. Jordan planned to use that opportunity to show he was worth every comma in the $30 million he'd earned in the 96-97 season. This was a perfect game for a competitor like MJ on the road. The team was 7-0 undefeated. The team they had done well against, a team that was lying there waiting for the Bulls. Michael loved playing a team like this, and the Heat seemingly couldn't have asked for a more desirable situation. They were unbeaten like Chicago. Miami is supposed to give the Bulls a rough time this season and be a little stronger than last year's version. There was playoff intensity right off the bat. Michael Jordan, turn around, and Jordan puts the Bulls up. Scoring game, Michael Jordan coming out for the first seven Bulls points. He turned around as the ball was in the air. He knew it was through, and fall away by Jordan. Jordan seemed to enjoy ruining Heat coach Pat Riley's day, and the Miami team represented enough of a challenge to get the Bulls fired up. But we also have to remember that MJ's toughest opponent might have been boredom in those days because the Chicago team was so powerful in the 90s. Jordan had 15 points in the first quarter alone. Sometimes you can't come out and play as you want because you get too excited. Michael just wanted to relax and let the game come to him early. Next thing you know, he was in a great rhythm. Michael grabbed the momentum in a split second at the end of the second quarter stealing an inbound pass from Kurt Thomas with one second remaining. The steal came one second after Scottie Pippen hit a three-pointer. Jordan promptly added another three-point shot. Miami suddenly trailed by four. And a look at another one right here. Gonna get another one. Oh, they yeah, that's two. Oh, oh. Six points in the last 12 plus seconds to end this first half. By the time the halftime buzzer sounded, Jordan had 26 points. He was taking advantage of having the slow-footed Sasha Danilovich guarding him. Miami twice led by 15 points. This was one of the most exciting things in sports, watching a desperate Chicago Bulls team climb back and the Heat might have won the game, but not good enough to play with this team until Jordan retires. Jordan left no doubt he took Hardaway's statement personally. With a little more than three minutes left in the third quarter, he helped the Bulls push a 57-53 lead up to 79-63. Jordan scored 12 points in the period, including a nifty over-the-shoulder shot over Alonzo Mourning. Jordan was fouled on the play, and after hitting the free throw, he smiled at the crowd as he waltzed up the court. They applauded. I get the high percentage shot if you get fouled. Well, instead, Jordan yes. gets the basket and gets fouled. Showtime. He wasn't even looking at the basket when he went up for that shot. Let's face it. That's right. After a Ron Harper jump shot, Tim Hardaway stood in the corner of the court cursing. Somebody pounded the ball nearly into the rafters, and Pat Riley was waving for a timeout. Moments later, the Bulls completed the 38-9 run, which started midway through the second quarter. They had a 16-point lead. That put them on their heels. To the second half. Jordan hits. Nothing's changed for him. And Minnesota team this year. We were impressed with the Australia when we saw them. They played well in the Olympics. They sure did. Jordan, basket counts and a foul. Uh, Michael Jordan, you're right. He's doing a great blanket job on Jordan. Even though he gets the basket, Leonard stayed with him as well as any human being could. Was this 1997 Miami Heat better than 1996? They had better resiliency and they performed better on the road, but they were not still better enough to beat Chicago. In 96, winning a championship after 18 months of return to the league, Jordan's excellence was already admired, but his in-your-face shots weren't. 
MJ, guarded by five Heat players at various times, had a one-handed alley-oop jam, spinning double pump layup, and numerous turnaround jumpers. Midway through the third quarter, Jordan hit a shot off the backboard over Hardaway and ran down the court laughing. What could you say? Who could stop that man? Dennis Rodman and Kurt Thomas exchanged angry words, and Tim Hardaway shot a few ungrateful glares at Bulls players. Kurt Thomas was trying to be physical with Rodman, hoping Rodman would fly off the handle. It didn't work. Rodman and Thomas were assessed technical fouls a few more than four minutes into the game. Phil Jackson even took him out of the game a couple of minutes later when it looked as if Rodman might draw another. Rodman thought Pat Riley was trying to make Thomas the next Rodman. He's teaching this boy to do everything he can to keep me off the boards and to frustrate me. But understand something, I'm a little wily cat. I can sneak around and do things, but I will not play that game. I get paid nine million. I must take all that abuse every night and earn my money. Jordan busted 50 points on the heat in the Bulls 106-100 victory. It was the 35th time in his career that Jordan has had 50 or more points. We were faced with a challenge, and it was a fun game. On the road, against an undefeated team that you've played well against in the past. They're sitting back waiting on you. The scenario was perfect for a competitor. That was ideal for me. He wanted to make a statement. The Heat bench realized as much. He was hitting everything. These two teams faced off in the playoffs, and in this game, they met in the first month of the next season. The last time the Bulls were in Miami, they left the Miami Heat frustrated and annoyed. Not much changed since the Bulls swept the Heat in the first round of the NBA playoffs in April 1996. The Heat was again frustrated and annoyed and trying to figure out what it could do to run with the Bulls in the 1996-97 season. Tim Hardaway was not delirious. He was serious. He would like to guard Michael Jordan in the sold-out game at Miami Arena. He probably regretted saying a day earlier that he relished the challenge of trying to stop the best player in the game. Rodman and Scotty Pippen. Turnaround by Jordan. He is phenomenal. At the head. Jordan up and under over Hardaway, and it drops for 38 for Michael Jordan. And besides, he was still stinging from the Bulls' three-game sweep of Miami in the 96 playoffs. We still have a bitter taste from how everything went down. Them talking to us, shoving it in our faces, laughing at us, humiliating us. It didn't feel nice. They are vocal. The referees say they didn't hear it, but they do hear it. They get away with a whole bunch of things. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. They have fun doing it. All these questions, will they have the stamina to keep up with younger teams? Will Rodman be too much of a distraction? Will they be hungry? Their 1996-97 slogan was, Drive for Five. They opened the season with easy back-to-back -back victories over Boston and Philadelphia. Jordan had the new fragrance cologne and feature-length film Space Jam, and he was at the top of his popularity entering the 96-97 season. He scored 57 points in these two games. Did Pippen have off-season ankle surgery? You'd never know. He was averaging 20 points and 7.5 assists. Rodman was his usual bland self. The purple-haired $9 million rebounder had a busy summer marrying himself in a mock wedding and filming a movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Phil Jackson, who signed a one-year contract and isn't in the spring expected back for 1997-98. The Bulls were the Bulls like everyone expected. Heat players were making X amount of dollars, but they were still the same team Chicago swept in the 96 playoffs. Bulls and the Heat? Chicago was in the class by itself in that comparison. Somebody told Scottie Pippen that the Heat players had been hurt when the Chicago players disrespected them during the 96 playoffs, laughing them off the court. If we did, we had a right to, Pippen said. We won 70 games. They nicked into the playoffs. We had a right to be arrogant and have an ego. Against their strongest opponent, 
the Bulls showed they're still the team to beat in the Eastern Conference. Handling Miami 106-100 at Miami Arena in a physical battle similar to that first round series. The Bulls were 7-0, coming back from a 15-point first half deficit. Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman picked up where they left off against Miami in April. Jordan scored 50 points on 18 of 33 shooting. Rodman grabbed 22 rebounds and, more important, successfully handled the mind games with Miami's Kurt Thomas and Alonzo Mourning. It turned out the Chicago Bulls had the heat right where they wanted. Through the final four minutes of the second quarter and the first four minutes of the third, they unleashed a 33-6 run en route to a 106-100 victory. And Tim Hardaway learned that day, never give a glimpse of motivation to Michael Jordan. Because MJ lived for it. It was his main purpose to compete, to play the game of basketball.